Oh, good morning, guys. Good morning. If you can't tell, we're back to corn. Just got done switching them over, putting heads on. Actually, the guys, Chris, Jordan, Eric, switched them over last night for whatever reason. They were ambitious. We're not really in a big hurry, but it rained for two days straight, so the soybeans are now wetter yet, like probably close to 20 most likely, so it's gonna take a day or two, and it's not gonna be very warm. It actually froze last night, got down to 30, maybe even cooler than that, so it's corn time. I'm glad it froze, kill the corn, kill the soybeans, the green spots, but corn day. Ready for corning? Receiving corn again? No, I gotta get down there. <laughs> My do-all screwdriver is froze up with rust. <laughs> it will not come apart no more. Somebody's wrecked it. <laughs> Are we ready, grain cart drivers? <laughs> he's got he's got no heat in his cab, so he's starting out the day very disappointed in life. Brody! <laughs> I guess, time to go. Corn plants kind of dried off. They got really wet from the frost. So hopefully it's ready by the time we get there. Cause it's, a, I don't know, 15 miles to the field. A tight squeeze through here, big wheels. He's not gonna make it. See how green that field is? That is the hail damaged beans that after we tilled it, they started growing. What a shame. We estimated it to be about 15 bushel per acre out there. Unbelievable. Now it froze, so they'll all die. We don't want them growing in the spring. talking to Rick, the mailman, and Chet decided to throw some metal out the back of his combine at us. It's off the gearing off. I think she survived, actually. Most of it's rubber, so we'll get that bolted on later. Don't stand behind the combine. I'm glad it didn't come further than it did. So I took all of the, these things off of the gearing off here because we were in down corn, and they like to wrap on there. And I put this one on because it likes to fling them out of the feeder house and out of the head. So I put this one on because I don't think we're in any down corn. I'll probably put them all back on eventually. But while I was putting this one on, for some reason I must have grabbed two and laid the other one in the head. And then we unhooked the heads and forgot about it. And I, yeah, I'm trying to come through the combine. It should be fine, it should be fine. Looks like they're doing a good job, which I expected, but you never know. Different variety, different moisture. So far, 18%. That's impressive. It's getting drier or it's the variety, one of the two, which I'm happy to see. I don't like combining 27% corn at all, actually. So that moisture is on the headland. We'll see once we get into the main road. So the field, the moisture is any wetter. Normally the headlands always drier, gets more air, maybe lesser yield, died sooner, compaction. So we'll see. We'll see. It probably will come in at 20, 21, but right now we're on the inside 24. And uh, yeah, we're at the 20.6. Love corn harvest. So much better than soybeans. It comes in so quick. Sounds like there's a Yankum rope in use. 
Uh, we had to try loading in the field, and we obviously see that ain't gonna work. Keep going, Eric. Keep going. If there's slack in the rope here, I'm gonna tell you to stop. Otherwise, so far, so good. Keep going, Eric. Yeah, keep going. Hey, Eric, stop. Eric, stop. Stop, Eric. There you go. Uh, the play by You gonna make that turn, Jordan? Oh, we've gotten severely bogged down. Brody, we're bogged down! Bogged down! <laughs> really good yielding corn. Nice square farm, so there was, take the headlands off, just go back and forth. We got done with about 77 acres here. Both carts were fully loaded. We're waiting here because we can't move without a grain cart, really, so. He'll be empty after this, but we had 4,000 bushels sitting on the headlands here waiting to be hauled away. Anyways, the reason we got behind is Dad couldn't drive a truck because he was trying to get dryers running since they've been turned off for a while. That can be tricky sometimes. How's your sweepers working, Brody? This dry corn, the head shelling is working. It's, it's immense. It is. Lots. <laughs> it's sweepers are giving her. That wet corn, I don't think you could get butt shelling if you tried. But uh, this kit, this combine, if you haven't seen before, has the harvest sweeps on. So how they work is they have a ridge on the deck plate and this cushions the cob when it comes down. When there is butt shelling, because there's always going to be, it catches them in here and then they got a little brush on the bottom that sweeps them right in. We're gonna take off to the next field. Now last year we did a bunch of side-by-sides. I'm still gonna wait until the corn gets drier. It ain't terrible butt shelling yet, but side-by-side -side of harvest sweep versus, you know, just factory setup. Last year was pretty impressive. Oh, I'm glad I have a cap. She's really whirling there. We're going 30 wide because we're only literally going three quarters of a mile to one of Eric's fields. We're gonna punch in there, see what the moisture is, a different variety than this. But with that being said, maybe it's dry, we're gonna try it. You don't wanna harvest anything over 20%. That actually was anywhere from 19 to 20. So maybe it is ready, I don't know. We're gonna find out shortly. Well, we knocked out a little bit on the 22 acres on Eric's field and on one half of the ditch. It's split in half by a ditch. Oh, look, I'm full again and deemed it to be too wet. He doesn't want to combine 20, I think it was 22%. And we found a field that's drier, so this is 19. So it'll work out better in the long run. Grain cart. Grain cart. Where are you, Chris? Come on. He's unloading Brody. The raccoons really went nuts around this grove. It must be a whole family. They brought their cousins to the party too. We're right at that length away from the farm where uh, we just slowly keep gaining just a little bit more in the carts when they come back from the trucks every single load. We're bogging down the trucking industry. There's 100,000 pounds. That little 9R is not liking its life on that cart. <laughs> Oh, when we had him fully loaded at the other field, I think he was at like four miles an hour climbing the hill. It was another one of them fields that the whole thing slopes, and he was always full on the wrong end once again, for whatever reason. That always has to happen. He was not happy. Well, I really like this extra three feet on the auger right now. He's up on the road, and I'm down in the field. They're in the ditch, and it's working. It's working really nice. No, they spilled some. I really wanted to leave that clip now, but you guys are just gonna have to bear with me on it. It happens to the worst of us too. So, so far I'm very pleased that we made the decision to switch over to corn. Two guys that I know sent me some Snapchats today of them trying soybeans. One guy had 14%, the other guy had 15%, so I feel like it was a good decision to switch over, keep progress moving, and not har not harvest 15% beans over 14. We'll do it, we've done it. It just can cause trouble in the grain bin. 
so at least we're getting some progress done and letting the beans dry down a little bit. Maybe tomorrow. We'll be back to beans tomorrow. There's Brody and Eric sending it. We're getting a lot of trash in this field coming in. I don't like that. It's harder to separate, but I think that frost, I don't know, it couldn't be frost. Plants just dried down enough that now we're ingesting a lot of the leaves are coming through the combine, which makes it more difficult to separate it out, but we're doing a good job, so just, I just don't like all that. And then it's, it likes to come in the tank then, little pieces of straw and sticks. This is just getting dangerous. No one wants to turn their lights on. Brody had to, he's got tint, so he couldn't see nothing, but the grain carters and Chet are left. It's getting tough to see him. I'm not gonna empty him until he turns his lights on. What do you think about that, huh? Who's got the power now? No, he doesn't have shut off clutches, so I have to get him. There's enough room to unload the whole thing. And we're at the end of the pass, which you would be able to see if we had our lights on. Brody has lost his mind. He's got half his lights off and he's driving in hazardous conditions up there. Not really sure what he's doing. Oh, the conditions have gotten safer and he can't see. He's back, but there's this guy still. He said I had to unload him, otherwise that was cheating and I would be disqualified. I don't make the rules, but no matter what the rules are, I will win. I will win. Even if I have to use my flashlight and tape it to the grill, that's not cheating. Nor is it my headlights. Man, it's like there's no lights on this machine. This is the dumbest game ever. Like, so stupid. No, I got it. I'm lighting her up. Wow, it's like it's midnight. <laughs> oh, I had to light it up. I had to light it up before something gets ruined. I was just trying to beat one grain card at least, but it's getting to be too unsafe. I had to light it up. The grain carts are still fighting it out though. Well, well, you look at this. Chet lost. It's just the grain carters now. He's over there, but you can't see him because he's trying to win. Well, you know what this is? That's victory. Grain carts on. He had to load a truck. That was getting dark. I had to use uh, my best eyes my very best size to find a tile and I'm walking around out in the dark. Why do we do the things we do? I suppose to stay awake. Apparently they want corn. Well, we're just about done with this variety in this field. It's 10 o'clock at night and I believe we're shutting down. So it was tomorrow, I guess, to finish, which I'm getting very, very stiff sitting in here. That's the thing about big carts is they just never fill up. Like when they are full, they go on load and then the revolving door. They never do stop coming back. It's a good problem, but yet you never get out to walk. I've been in here for like four hours and haven't even gotten out. Honestly, that's like maybe one of the biggest things how we can get around with not having a ton of semis is having a lot of rolling storage in the field. So most of our fields are not perfectly square like this one. Here's what we're in right now. We're in that. So there's always more headlands to go do, so the minute that we start getting bogged down, we'll go dork around and the carts will have, you know, four truckloads in the field filled up. We can go mess around and they can keep filling trucks. The trucks never even know that we're doing headlands. It works actually very well, but you gotta, it's management. You gotta manage it. Me and Brody are always on the phone with each other. Well, time to go do more headlands, I suppose. I feel kind of bad, the landlord's house is right here. His lights are still on, so we're not keeping him up. He's probably uh, enjoying the show, actually. He was actually out here, talked to Eric for a while, and he was said, yep, yeah, back when I first started farming, I used to pick corn one row at a time. That is so crazy to me. Like, they would probably spend all fall, you know, one row at a time, probably spend all fall in this field. We're at a standstill for a tile flag. All right, I guess that's a wrap for the night. That one's got two loads on it. That one's got one load. We punched into this other variety actually, and it's drier. Longer day, but drier. So I think we'll be able to finish this field in the morning. Hopefully. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.